Welcome back to new Max Talks box office episode here on Max Talks Movies. My name is Max. And we're today breaking out of the box office just domestically for this episode from January the 19th to the 21st. Uh, we're still only three weeks into the new year, so I'm not going to break down the worldwide or domestic numbers of the year yet, but uh, I'm going to break down this weekend and what's uh, really not coming out uh, this upcoming weekend. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new, subscribe, ring the bell. I'm officially moving this show to Tuesday so I can gather in all the final numbers from the weekend. Um, so every Tuesday you'll have this show as well as I, I talk movie reviews, TV show reviews. I do out of theater reactions and I'm also bringing back monthly and movie rankings. So please subscribe and well comment down below. What did you see in theaters this past weekend? What are you going to see this upcoming weekend? Are you just waiting for the big releases to hit back in theaters? Let me know in the comment section. Also, please like the video, the thumbs up button. This week was one of the shorter box office videos, but let's get into this past weekend's box office. This is at January 19th to the 21st domestically. Uh, at number one for its second weekend is Mean Girls from Paramount. Um, did drop 59% uh, in its uh, second weekend. Uh, so 11.6 million for Mean Girls 2024, down to 50 million um, domestically. Again, this film was very much made on the cheap side, so it needed a spectacular opening. But 59% is a pretty good, a pretty, uh, you know, it's kind of in the middle of being bad or good drop, kind of like a mediocre drop for this movie. Uh, but this will have another huge advantage as there's really nothing coming out this weekend in theaters. So um, Mean Girls should be number one. Um, now, the, I think the big problem for this movie is that the word of mouth has not been good for this movie. It seems like Hollywood has been trying to make musicals work over the last couple of months. And I love musicals. I've seen all of them in theaters and all of them are at least good to, to great movies. Uh, but it does not seem like people are interested in seeing musicals in theaters. And the word of mouth has not been great for this movie. And I think because of the marketing did not look like it was a musical, um, it feels like people are being surprised that it's a musical and not enjoying themselves. So um, I think it's going to be very interesting what Hollywood does with musicals moving forward. We had Color Purple not do very well at the box office. Now, while Wonka did do very well, again, that movie was not marketed as a musical. And it is a kid's movie, which you can get away with as a musical. Um, so the kind of these PG-13 or above musicals are definitely struggling at the marketplace. So very interesting thing to watch over the months and years to come. In second place, in its second weekend, is The Beekeeper from MGM, uh, dropping only 48%, but again, only $8.6 million for The Beekeeper. It's up to $31.2 million. Again, a very cheap movie. Um, it's doing even better internationally. Um, it's it's around $44 million right now um, internationally, so it's closing in on $100 million uh, worldwide, which is more than enough for this movie, so to win for MGM, Statham, and David Ayer. Um, in third place is Wonka in its sixth weekend, um, only dropping 21%, again, 6.7 million. It's up to 187 domestic is Wonka. Um, a big win for them that there just wasn't many Christmas movies that, uh, you know, that focus squarely on Christmas this year. And uh, Wonka obviously has the star power. Again, this is from Warner Brothers Discovery, the star power of Timothy Chalamet. Um, but this is a very famous character for multiple generations. And the movie has done very well. It's been very well liked for the most part. So Wonka is at number three. Illumination and Universal's Migration is at number four in its fifth weekend, only a 12% dip, 5.4 million for Migration. It's up to 94 million. So it needs around six more million here domestic uh, to get to the $100 million mark. Again, Illumination films, while they're not seen as the top studio, they are a money generating movie studio and and uh, migration will be another victory for them once they reach is over 100 million domestic and they will return to their most famous franchise by far as they are doing a fourth despicable me movie that will be hitting theaters later this year um so elimination just keeps turning these movies out and making a profit and that continues with migration again that has been the animated movie of the holiday season wish is doing a lot worse than this movie um and also this movie is doing better than Trolls uh, 3. So uh, even though these are not great numbers for animation, um, 
Still a great year when you had Super Mario and Spider-Verse, but this movie did better than Wish uh, and, Ele and even Elemental in those ways. So they do have some winners, but Migration, a winner for Universal and Illumination. And wrapping up the top five, still in the top five in its fifth weekend is Anyone But You from Sony, only dropping 24%. 5.4 million. Uh, it's up to 64 million domestic. Very good holds for anyone but you. Um, definitely will help the star power of both Glenn Powell and uh, Cindy Sweeney. We'll see if Cindy Sweeney has all this goodwill into being one of the co-stars of Madam Web, which releases in a couple of weeks. Um, but anyone but you, for a romantic comedies, don't see any romantic comedies doing anything in theaters anymore. Most of these movies of the genre are just squarely on the streaming sites, especially Netflix that dominates the streaming of rom-coms. You don't really see them hitting theaters and doing well. So it's a good sign uh, for that genre uh, that uh, it is doing well in theaters. As I said, there's only kind of one, I guess, wide enough release this coming weekend, which is it's a movie called Miller's Girl starring Martin Freeman and Jenna Ortega. Uh, that is, it's been a festival type film that is hitting theaters. And this is already the last weekend of January, a very weak month of January. Uh, but again, I can, we'll, we'll talk about the preview, but we're two weeks away from Argyle, which is theaters February 2nd, which is supposed to be the kickoff of us getting out of this slump of really no major movies hitting the marketplace. So stay tuned for the channel all week as I have videos dropping very soon. Thanks for joining another episode of Max Talks Box Office.